Yeah, I know. In October 1726. Hmm. I feel like I'm not understanding the sentence right. No, it's not written very well. Look at this. So that, that just makes perfect sense, doesn't it, to build houses. The windows coming on. It's obviously been mud flooded, isn't it? Look at this. Interesting old house. More mud flattery. Oh, yeah. More mud flooded. All down here, look. All of this lot. You don't see these very often these days. What this? The boot scrapers. Oh, right. To get the mud off your feet from the filthy streets. That's this is old. Look, look at the crap brickwork. This is like Oh look, Miriam Moses. She was born here, Miriam Moses. Social reformer. Well she couldn't afford to get her house done up, could she? That's wood. Interesting place, man. Walk down and look at these crap houses at the end. Them. It's like Dickensian London. We're in Spitterfields. This is like, um, look at the birdcage, Bep, over the door. We've just found this really Hawksmoor. Hawksmoor. Found this really strange church. Look how mud flooded it is. Whoa, man! Look at the. Can we go around the front of that? Yeah. Let's have a look. This place is amazing around here. <gasps> Look at these. These are original railings as well, I think. It's a 
Jesus. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Oh, my God. This place, it's just, this has got so much old architecture around here. So me and my daughter are in East London and we've just come across this ghastly church and I'm wondering if it's Hawksmoor Church because it's got like a very dark feel to it. Look at this here. It's underground as well. Morning guys. Well, we had a great day out, myself and my daughter. Um, lots of old buildings to look at and that whole area is like um, the edge of Jack the Ripper country. So I'm going to go back and do my own little Jack the Ripper tour specifically for um, my channel rather than join on one of their tours because Jack the Ripper is quite a big interest of mine. <laughs> Um, so the church is a Hawksmoor church. Um, it's Christchurch Spitterfield. And here it is. It's uh, quite a well-known church. And I had a look. I couldn't find any old photographs of it. So let's have a look at the wiki. I'd um, already seen the uh, Hawksmoor Church in uh, Greenwich, which is how I recognise the thing, because they're just huge and strange and um, the energy from them is really odd and the history of these churches is quite strange as well. So it was built 
between 1714 and 1729 to a design by Nicholas Hawksmoor. To a design. A so they, 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 there was a commission to build 50 new churches because they were saying that some places just didn't have any churches. So rather than build like um, a decent sort of like little church, they build this huge, great big, ridiculous thing. Tuscan columns and it's, I mean, it's just absolutely massive. So I had a little look around and um, found some quite interesting information about these churches. So only 12 were built. Are you surprised? I mean, how in the name of God do you get something like that together? The aisles are roofed with elliptical barrel vault, vaults raised on, carried on raised composite order columns. They've got um, a magnificent organ, we'll see more of that later. And the whole thing um, sort of went into rack and ruin and they had to clear out the burial vaults beneath the church. So instead of hiring a commercial undertaker, the Friends of Christ Church raised funds for the employment of an archaeological team who excavated nearly a thousand internments. Only 390 were identifiable. So they cleaned it all up, tarted it all up again, and it's opened up. We did go to have a look inside. There's the organ. There's the interior. We did go to have a look, but there were some people like doing um, some sort of roses uh, some sort of flower, flower display so we didn't go in so it's all been restored, the crypt but I wanted to show you these Our bookmarks Christchurch Spitalfields right, these are photographs of the um excavation in the crypt so the north wall before excavation began it's in a bit of a state isn't it the coffins look at the mess look at the state it was in i wonder if it was mudded before and they um had to clean the mud out first because it looks like it's and this is the team going in pulling the coffins out and excavating more of the crap down there and here we got like some of the actual coffins look at the mud look at that coffin I would have thought that was a more sort of recent one it's just all been chucked down there look at it this is um what it was like before I think piled up coffins that's crazy that's just awful isn't it why would you do that This is what it was like in the crypt. It looks like they've been washed in there, doesn't it? It looks like a, a sea of coffins. That's just mad. That's madness. Mad to me. Look at that. They just chuck them all up against the wall like that.
That's a nice one, isn't it? Look at that. It's still got all its beading. And... Um, J779. That's like a J, doesn't it? This is a uh, coffin stuff. Some uh, body bits in a minute. Skulls and stuff. Like that. I think a skull showing a bonnet and a wig. Shroud sheet. These must be quite recent. I'm surprised there was anything left in any of those coffins. Looks tall, doesn't he? I wonder how long those sticks are. I wonder how long they are. Looks quite new. Blimey. Hmm. What? They got these out of there? A trepan skull. Detail of a child's hand? How the hell long was that in there? Twisted spine. Good God. Okay, well, that was all a bit grisly. What? What? Post-mortem work? He's had the slice of his head sliced off. Oh dear. Gosh. I find it hard to believe they got bonnets and shirts and things out of these things. Anyway, I think that's enough of that. I don't think there's anything else here. Stacking of the coffins. Anyway. You get an idea of what it was like below when they did the, the work. And Nicholas Hawksmoor has got a very colourful history. In fact, Peter Ackroyd wrote a book about Nicholas Hawksmoor. But before we go there, let me just show you some of this. Alright, this is one of his other churches. Now this one is in Bermondsey in Southwark and it's not there anymore it's it got hit by a bomb in the war I, I I've seen the films the photographs of it being hit by a bomb it didn't look that bad and in fact it was used um, it was severely damaged in World War II a scheme of 1956 provided for rebuilding but it was never done but it was still being used in 1960 and it was closed by the time the rebuilding scheme was rescinded in 1968. So it was distinguished because it had um, a comet on its spire, this bit here. So I found a photo and it, sure enough, look, you can see there's a, a comet on its spire. So that's not here anymore, but this is. And you can see they've used the foundations for the new church, the London City Mission. You see the foundations here? This plus thing is rubbish there. And that reminded me of the Tate. Here, where they used the foundations of Millbank Prison and also Westminster Cathedral I don't know if I can get one here the state of this thing yeah this one will show you <laughs> well
where they used the foundations of the Tot Hill prison here. Let's close these down and I've got more. So they, were, they have been building on buildings. Christchurch Spitterfields. One of the new churches built in London as part of the commission for building 50 new churches. It was designed by Nicholas Hawksmore, who also worked on six of the other churches, but only 12 were built. Construction work began in 1714, but not completed until 1729 due to funding problems. I mean, are you surprised? Have you seen it? Original organ was built in 1735 and was the largest in England at the time, with over 2,000 pipes. There it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, the uh, size of it. People are dwarfed. Big giant doors. Huge, great big machine church. That's how it looks from the side. Coming across it, I could feel the energy from it just walking down the street, you know? Okay, let's have a little look about Hawksmoor because he's the interesting thing in all this. So this novel, Peter Ackroyd is like um, the go-to man for London history. He's done lots of uh, books about London. He's done a huge, great big like book about the history of London, which I have and which I really need to read. It's um, quite the book and he wrote The House of Dr. D in which he introduces the idea of a homunculus, homunculus. I was trying to remember that word last night, I couldn't remember it. So in this book, it's set in two time periods and it's about Nicholas Dyer, who's an architect, and Nicholas Hawksmoor, who's a detective in the 1980s. And he's investigating a, a series of murder committed in these churches. And the whole thing ends up going on about human sacrifice, people being buried under the foundations, all sorts of stuff. It's uh, a real dark little novel and um, it has lots and lots of like um, uh, alchemical knowledge and information woven in. I had the book, in fact I took my house to bits last night because I have read Hawksmoor but I read it when I didn't have a real clue of what I was reading and I do now so you can Dyer who is Hawksmoor develops his own belief in a reference between the pattern his churches form and the realm of evil and otherworldly the pattern of his churches mirrors the proportion of the seven orders the exotic names Ackroyd gives to these demons bring to mind the seven masculine of Babylonian occultism Due to the principles of sympathetic magic, Dyer reproduces his within his churches the pattern of the seven planetary orders and um, causes stuff to happen. And I won't give too much away in case you want to read the book yourself, but I'm definitely going to get it again. And um, Masonic architecture, Hawksmoor's London churches. Nicholas Hawksmoor was a mysterious Freemason and an architectural collaborator of Christopher Wren and John Vanbrugh. Known as the Devil's Architect after the Great Fire of London, Hawksmoor, yeah. <coughs> Hawksmoor designed six of the twelve new churches built. So his work has been woven into a parallel history of London's underworld, particularly his Christchurch Spitterfields, near which Jack the Ripper performed his grisly murders in the 1980s. So. Somebody called Ian Sinclair wrote a poem called Lud Heat, which suggests that the sites of Hawksmoor's London churches form an invisible geometry of power lines in the city, corresponding to an Egyptian hieroglyph. I've seen this. Right, let's see if I can find it. I've actually seen this before. And they do, they form a pentagram. Hawksmoor's 
churches pentagram so I'm looking into John Dee again I've got a, a book that I've re well I've been reading it for ages it's just backwards and forwards reading with this stuff so I'm trying to read it properly it's really interesting so an occult psychogeography got a picture of the pentagram on here after all this his church this is Hawksmoor's churches they feature obelisks in places of, st of steeples pyramids for towers in imitation sacrificial altars appearing instead of arches a rich language of symbols that seem to contradict perhaps even mock the architectural vocabulary of traditional Christian churches this guy oh Hawksmoor was no Christian explains Sir William Gull in From Hell. His pagan works perpetuate the occult teachings of the ancient Dionysiac architects, his greatest influence. There it is. Right, so... I'm not quite sure where my church is. It's East London, so it's going to be one of these. So yeah, he does a pentagram. That's the Greenwich one. Does it come up? So... Um, I'm going to try and get to see all of them <laughs> I, I don't know if I will but I've seen two but I've only filmed one yeah I'm going to read this one more because this is coming useful for my um, John D video Jack the Ripper, Alan Moore and the Art of Psychogeography so yeah, Hawksmoor, interesting character, chum of Sir Christopher Wren, builder of uh, let's, let's have a look at some of his other stuff. And they're all got this like huge presence they're all I mean God knows how they got built they all got this look to them look at this one dearie me that's mine that I just filmed So what do I think? I think there was something already here and I think he made a church. I think that the bottom bit was already here, probably the square the square bit. I don't think he, he built all of it. Maybe he did, I don't know, 1729. He was a very young man as well when he got involved with all this. If you look at his uh, age, if you put Nicholas Hawksmoor, you get a uh, Loose. So seventeen twenty nine. Oh, he died quite late in the proceedings then. Hang on. From sixteen eighty four. Onwards, Hawksmoor worked with Wren. 1684. 
and he was born in 1661 so from his early 20s onwards oh yeah right okay well there you go thanks for watching um it was good to get out good to show a few a few basemented houses and a bit of london graffiti and i found a hawksmoor church i'm going to do more on the occult and the alchemical um stuff behind these london churches and bring in mr d as well and um see you later <laughs>